It's a very nice strategy coming out from NYXL. San Francisco with an opportunity here. Everything is being committed to this fight by the NYXL. And San Francisco coming out way ahead in this fight. I don't know who brought the cookware, but regardless, it was a meal for the NYXL. That's a crucial team win for San Francisco Shock. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Blizzard Arena. It's me, the one and only Steves. So next up, we have the NYXL versus the San Francisco Shock. The Shock have been playing very well lately, so let's see if they can pull up the upset. Yeah? Where are my Shock fans at? Awesome. Awesome. They're here. They're ready. I'm throwing it on over to you, Golden Boy. Thank you so much, Aaron. Appreciate it as always. And yes, excited for this one. The NYXL versus the San Francisco Shock. Golden Boy alongside with Reinforced Crumbs and now Zoe joining us once again. Um, and you know, it, this is this is going to be an interesting game because NYXL obviously have just looked like a strong team throughout the season, Reinforced, but uh, San Francisco Shock showing some some signs of life. Yes, they are, but it's New York XL, right? So I'm, I'm sorry, the crowd, but you know, I don't want to be a downer, but New York XL, so this is going to be one upset if it happens yeah that will be I mean, we just saw one. it's true we, we did just saw an upset it could Dude, happen. that was the gladiators okay they're on fire okay it's still an but upset yeah but <laughs> so are so are the shock in the last game yeah. it's still an upset okay. you know i'm just you know what hey it's it, let's see if maybe sunday saturday is just upset day who yeah. knows any we'll, given saturday but well, speaking of saturday let's look at the schedule johnny but, all right but, there you go so you got yourself the london spitfires the la gladiators that kicked off the broadcast the gladiators taking that one three to one over the london spitfire and now we will have the nyxl going up against the san francisco shock in our final matchup of the day will be the Florida Mayhem going up against the Dallas Fuel. Let's go ahead and welcome to the stage your first team in this matchup. It is the NYXL. Beating Philadelphia yesterday 3-1. to one. This team looks very good as always. And no surprise there. Really. Yeah, and especially the adaptations coming out yesterday. Look at the swag. Video. Oh, man, slow walk. Yeah, yeah. Specifically on King's Row, we saw a lot of adaptations going on, even about Skya. I know that Monte Cristo loved the adaptation coming out from the New York squad, and it just goes to show how strategic this squad is. And I mean, they're looking like a stage two contender uh, for the, the championship, of course, as well. So a uh, huge squad on the stage. Yeah, we saw a lot of changes coming out of them. And when I talked to their uh, player, Ark, about their new look in Stage 1, uh, in Stage 2, excuse me, he said that uh, he and Jonag are actually under a lot of pressure this time around, as they're not uh, as protected as they used to be. So they kind of find it hard to stay alive. Well, this is the team that builds itself off of the supports. You've got Jonak, which is practically your third DPS, built off of Ark that used to be damage boosting him, but it's a new stage for him. Man on your screen right here. New stage, new hair, new <laughs> style for him too, right? Because now as a Zenyatta, you can't afford to be out there fragging 24-7. You're going to have people gunning for you nonstop. So they have to take a more reserved role, which means that the rest of this team can be more aggressive. The talent on this team, without a doubt. A conversation we talk about all the time with, with Seoul and with London um, and, and, you know, Top to bottom, this roster stacked. Uh, yeah. They could field any team and, and succeed. And a hero. I'm sure Doha is going to mention Libero Sanso at any point during this game because it's yeah. insane. Yeah, exactly. I, and I, I'm pumped to see it. Hopefully we get it. But you know what? I know that this team does not want to see that happen. So let's welcome to the stage their opponents, the San Francisco Shock. Now the Shock are coming off of a huge win over the Dallas Fuel earlier the, in the week, 3-0. That was a matchup that I think everyone looked at and said, oh, Dallas should win this one on paper. But the Shock lived up to that name, and they were able to take that W. They were. It looked absolutely fantastic. And uh, look at them taking to the stage in confidence. However, they are well aware that they're going up against the Juggernaut. When I talk to them about their current power rankings, who they think is on top, all of them Really, all of them agree that it's got to be NYXL, who's currently the strongest team. Sleepy bringing his blanket in, you know, staying safe out blanket. there. Yeah, Sleepy with his blanket. That's actually yeah. beautiful. That's, that's <laughs> I just yeah. love this. Sleepy up. has been one of the players who started popping off on the San Francisco squad, right? But I want to highlight Dante again. I've been harping on Dante for the past few weeks, but it's just because he has started to improve so much as a player. And, you know, it brings some questions into life. 
what is going to happen when Sinatra comes of age, of course. Uh, later this stage, Sinatra will become available for the San Francisco Shock Squad. We know he has a mean tracer, but Dante is really up this game. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about this player that I, that I really am starting to resonate with, because he was coming in as a guy that's basically standing in for superior tracers to come in, but that's that fire under his ass has put him to be one of the strongest members of the team. He's been stepping up to the challenge, and whatever happens afterwards, I think that he's going to have a great spot on any team that would just want to upgrade a tracer. So anybody that needs a tracer, you know, yeah. take, take notes. And this is like graduation, Winky right? Base. You're going up against Sai Biolbi, so yes. this is your final test. Yeah, this, know, is, this is when it gets a little challenging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, would have to, I would have to imagine, especially with how the, the NYXL kind of shift their focus and you're starting to see a little bit more of an aggressive uh, Sai Biolbi. And as a matter of Ooh. fact, though, uh, actually, I do want to ask Zoe crumbs. I'll get you, Poppy. Uh, but oh, Zoe, I, like I, I need to ask you. I need to ask you a question here because how have NYXL been prepping for this matchup? Yeah. So when I talked to them earlier this week about their matches this week, uh, they said that they actually focused a lot more on the Philadelphia Fusion. So maybe the shock is kind of going under their radars, and we saw in the past that that can lead to pretty bad results. However, in stage one, uh, they actually their main scrimming partner for NYXL was the San Francisco Shock. So those two teams actually do know each other very, very well. Let's see who can, um, you know. Get the edge over one another. Can get the edge in the end because it's still a new stage, a new meta, so. Very interesting to hear that New York had the San Francisco Shock as one of their main scrim partners for the first stage where they finished in second place. You would have thought that maybe they were scrimming up against teams that were even higher in the standings, but. Well, actually, the, the reason why they scrimmed against them is because they didn't face them in stage one. Mm. It was one of those things where they didn't have to give away any strats so they could just scrim against them however they want. Right. And true, and, and it was a completely different meta back then as well, right? You know, the Mercy meta, very prominent, so now we're shifting it up. Uh, Crumbs, I do feel bad, though. I cut you off. My no, team. that's all right. Are you good? I also You'll just get cut me I, 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 I know. I got, I got you, boo-boo. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, excited for this game here. Uh, reinforced, though. Who are some of the players you're looking out for in this match? Well, you gotta highlight Ark and Jonak, right? Because this is one of the best uh, support duos in the league, in my opinion. Uh, we, we questioned them going into stage two a bit, but then Ark, he just proved to be an amazing Ana coming in with the sleep darts and protecting Jonak to make sure that Jonak can pop off even with Nana boost and just rack up these kills. So uh, I need everyone needs to look out for this duo going into this game because Jonak is a crucial player for New York Excelsior and Ark has proven to be his protector. Throughout. But I think it's a bit more than just Ark and Jonak now though because before they were very self-sustaining with the Zenyatta and Mercy. Now you no longer have the res non-stop so you have say Biobi as your third member to just support them. Look at the little graphic now you get to see them <laughs> as they prepare for the game just concentrated. Yeah. Look at that. We're improving. There's more. We're yeah. improving. I hear there's more coming. Yeah, there's more. Apparently, well, it, but it, it, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hits you in the face. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> now, you, sure, you're, you're correct, Crumbs. There's no resurrection anymore with the Mercy, of course, but just the sheer amount of playmaking ability you have with the Ana, with the Biotic Grenade and the Sleep Dart, of course. I think actually Ana will see a lot more play, perhaps moving forward these few, next few weeks, because you can shut down the Winstons that are Primal Raging, of course, and you can make these uh, kind of plays happen that we rarely see as much in a war. That will benefit Sleepy as well, though, so the Shock can bring Anna to Anna firepower. Well, that would have to be Dark, of course, on the Anna. But oh, it's Sleepy does it too. Go. They've done it. They flex it. Yeah, but not the Anna Sen combo, you know? Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll oh. see how this we'll pans see the out beats, in the half. We'll see. Okay, sure. Uh, we will <laughs> see what happens in the half. Thank you guys so much for your inside. Blizzard Arena, let's make some noise because we're going coast to coast, baby. And let's go ahead and send it over to the one and only Monty and Doa to call the action. That's right. No, sorry, Golden Boy. We're still on the same coast as you. So <laughs> that is not exactly coast to coast. I see what you're trying to do there, though. Hey, guys. Doa, yeah. Monty here. It's time for New York Excelsior versus San Francisco Shock. Now on paper, this one looks like it may be favoring one team a bit. Yeah, it does, but San Francisco is coming off a strong win against the Dallas Fuel, True. and especially players like Dante. If we look at Route 66 against the Fuel, he went a staggering 48 eliminations and one death on a combination of Tracer and Sombra, which I don't care who you're playing against. That is a phenomenal performance. So. Oh, yeah, that guy towards the end of Stage 1 and then following through into Stage 2 has really showed us kind of constant improvement, and it's which is great for San Francisco because it takes off the pressure from Baby Bay to have to be that super hard carry, especially now that we're in a meta where the Genji isn't as prevalent as it was before. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen San Francisco. They've been trending towards 
a similar play style. And when we talk about New York, as Reinforce mentioned on the desk, they have been looking very adaptable here in stage two, switching up their style of play and their compositions to suit their opponents. And what San Francisco does is they play an overwhelming amount of Tracer or Sombra from Dante combined with a long range hit scan uh -huh. on Baby Bay. So it's either McCree or Widowmaker uh, or Soldier 76 on Baby Bay. So they haven't shown a lot of diversity in their compositions recently, but they've been executing well with what they have. So True. we'll look and see what exactly New York is going to bring out because they should be expecting this style. So Monty, I saw in the audience, there was someone that had a sign that said, I don't know what dive comp is, and at this point I'm too afraid to ask. So why don't you take a moment and just give us a quick overview. What is a dive comp? Yeah, a dive comp would typically be what we consider a Genji, Tracer, Winston, Diva, uh, combination with a Zenyatta. Uh, of course, there's some alterations in there. It doesn't really matter if you run the Lucio, which they used to run and dive, and are running it more again, or sure. the Mercy, which we saw a lot of in stage one. Idea is a lot of mobility and following up on a jump into the back line with a Zenyatta orb to kill a target very quickly and snowball the fight with a 6v5. Right. So that's what a dive map is in essence. Here we go. New York Excelsior on the attack. As far as dive goes, think of somebody diving into a pool. You just jump right in there. That's what that comp does. Yeah, it's all about go. using those movement abilities in a coordinated fashion, which yep. we're going to see this composition right now from the New York Excelsior. So That's right. let's take a look at how they're going to execute it. They do this a lot. So this is a typical formation for them. They're going to run Sabiel B and Libero around the far side on the opposite side of Jonak, and the tanks are going oh. to respond. That's right. To where San Francisco puts pressure, whether that's the support or the DPS. Well, Sabiel B lately has been putting a lot of pressure onto those supports. A little bit more than we're used to seeing from him, but it's done New York well. Dock down already, so Jonak with an early kill, man. You don't want to get anywhere near that guy, Zenyatta. Baby Bay throws on the Biotic field, but Jonak and the rest of uh, New York chasing him away. He'll go down. Nomi falls as well, so New York with a pretty strong attack to start things off here. And that may just be point A. And that's the patience you get. Good dive comp teams are going to wait for you to make a positional error before they strike and then use their superior mobility and positioning to punish you for it. That's what happens with Dak. And the way New York runs it is they run the supports and the uh, DPS on opposite sides of point A on Volskaya, and the tanks will leap to wherever there is a positional error. Well, there you go. Point A, taken real fast by New York Excelsior. Now steamrolling towards point B. Dante has that EMP ready to go. You really want to win a fight here if you're San Francisco to get some sort of stability, some little bit of breathing room on the point. Jonak nearly falling, but Dante takes a volley and so has to translocate out. Yep. Battle still going back and forth right now. Dante going to be looking to try an EMP. He's not going to get a chance. The, trans or the Transcendence comes out when they see Dante. So they bait it out, which yeah. is great for the shock. And it uh, looks like New York just has to back away. So now without that Zenyatta ultimate, San Francisco may want to get a bit aggressive here. They did kill off Libero, who went back. Has to rejoin his team now. Dante still has that EMP. Uh, you're winning big mind games when you can force the Transcendence that early and then force the enemy back at the same time. Right. Not really a big deal for the San Francisco Shock, but does hurt the, the Excelsior quite a bit. Very true. New York trying to just grab a little bit of high ground there. As they come in with the elevator, Libero nearly has that Dragon Blade. Once he's got it, you think maybe that would be the point where they need to go, but the EMP comes in. San Francisco wants to win a fight right here, right now. They charge in, but New York backs off well. They take Sleepy along with them, and Baby Bay pops Attack Visor on the point because New York, not deterred, they are going to go in anyway. Libero with the Dragon Blade now, just keeping everybody zoned off that isn't already dead. And San Francisco giving up a bit of this point already. They do get Libero in the end. Dante with an important kill there. But now the respawning players of San Francisco have to turn this fight around. They've got the transcendence to do it. But Jonak fragging out, man, on that Zenyatta. Mano just goes ahead and pops that Primal Rage. Going to keep Sleepy. And the rest of the team, Dak, the other support, bottled up here as New York tries to take the point. Yeah, hack on the Mano, though. Is he going to get out in time? No, nope. he will not. Oh. New York, now with that sound barrier on the San Francisco side, may need to back off. Nevix, though, taken down with the self-destruct, so maybe New York not done quite yet. Looked like it might have been San Francisco's moment with that Lucio ultimate, but uh, 
New York, man, they have nearly got this point already. Yeah, Mono's coming back, so and they haven't close. transcended. Sleepy Swat is switching over to the May now. Yeah. Nevix on the Doomfist. Jonak with the transcend, it's gonna pop in as the Doomfist comes in. Nevix gets melted immediately. Now the May is there. Sleepy trying to delay as long as he can, but it's not enough, and New York will take point D with four minutes and 12 seconds in the time bank. Mistake at the end there. They could have had players on the point itself, but they were trying to follow up on the EMP that was coming from Dante. First EMP of that match only hit two members, and so that gave Libero an opportunity to use the Dragon Blade on the point itself and right. start that extended battle on point B, which slowly tipped in favor of New York. Well, it seems like it didn't really connect with the tanks the way that Dante wanted to either. So right away, you saw New York just diving in onto the point and kind of using that as their uh, their moment to start the fight. Yeah, I hit Mecco with it, but Mono was still able to get in. Ah, uh, okay. So well. we are going to go to an attack round now from San Francisco, have an opportunity to, to, to tie us up. And they look like they're going to be playing into the dive composition again. Okay, and yeah, we'll see if Baby Bay sticks on that uh, Roadhog. Seen him play it a little bit in the past, so I suppose it is possible if you run the Lucio Moira to bring in that triple tank. Yeah, that it is It is possible here. It's. I don't think it's quite as good as when San Francisco tends to use it, such as point C on Route 66, where you have yeah. a more confined space to get those hooks. We've been seeing Baby Bay play mostly the uh, Soldier 76 lately, which is yep. a fine hero to play on attack on Volskaya. You just try to take that high ground on the left side, generally when you're coming in as the attacker. So I would not be shocked at all to see him uh, swap at the last moment. Yep, Sleepy over on the Zenyatta. So yeah. we'll see if Baby Bay makes the change too. And there's not a lot of danger of New York running a Sombra defense. They have trended away from that, even though this is a strong Sombra map and relied on the dive defense Overall, yeah, it's so hard to dive New York though. With I mean, Libero and Arc, those guys just take care of each other so well in the back line. San Francisco, though, on the attack to try to equalize here. They need to take two points, and ideally for them, they'll take it with more time left in the time bank. Yes, uh, Baby Bay was thinking about the Widowmaker, sees the dive composition, and now wants to play the Roadhog. So they're okay. gonna rush the point and try and have a higher amount of healing with the help of the Moira. And that's the plan. Now going into the room on the side here, Baby Bay chasing. There's a hook on the Mecco. If they can de-mech him, that would be big. They do get just that. And that's a low health member of New York. Libero nearly taking out a lot of low health members. There he goes. And San Francisco with a great first attack here on Volskaya. They didn't let New York have an opportunity to isolate a member. They use a Lucio speed boost to just jump onto the point and into the room on the side where the supports are hiding on the second floor. So decisive attack from the San Francisco Shock. A lot more HP in total with this lineup of heroes. Yeah, seven minutes now to assault point B. If you are the Shock, Libero. Oh. Uh, he actually yeah. he actually had about 33% of his uh, his Dragon Blade, thought about switching to Farah, and then changes back onto the Genji. That's huh. a reaction to Baby Bay switching right yeah. there. So he did reset his ultimate, but Baby Bay also resetting his, moving to the McCree. That's a quick building ultimate on both sides either way. Baby Bay, though, just eliminated by Sable B, drops a Pulse Bomb, no kills with that, but already San Francisco having to retreat a bit. Uh, this is what we're talking about when we discuss New York's adaptability. You can see how fast they're making these decisions. Libero sees that he's still on the Roadhog, moves up to the forest. San Francisco sees he moves to the forest, which is to the McCree. And then Libero goes right back to the Genji. So they're constantly keeping an eye on their opponent's compositions and how they can make these little tactical swaps to get big advantages. Well, that was one of the things that made uh, New York's match against Philly yesterday really cool. See both teams adapt, and that's a nice stick on the Jonak. Dante coming in big, and now Arc the Sleep Dart doesn't connect, but Dante says, hey, you know what? I've done enough damage. I can go and focus on someone else now. Build my ultimate back up again. Mano jumping in, jumping back to try to protect the rest of his team anyway. But San Francisco needs to follow up on that kill, and they will. Dante with a kill on the Mego now. Save will be zoned out a little bit. They've got the sound barrier to get aggressive with Jonak coming in with the transcendence now to try to hold the point for his team a bit longer. And there's a primal rage for Mono. That Dragon might do Blade. it. Dragon Blade, once that transcendence is over, if he's still got a bit more charge, but no, no kills for Libero in that one. They're still that dragging out this match, Doa, to get the members of their team back up. That's the plan anyway. Mecco demeked again. 
So New York going to be sending people in a few at a time just to keep San Francisco from getting four control meter. But San Francisco not really being pushed back throughout all this. They get Mano, they get Mecco. That's one tick already. Looks like they're going to get a second one here. And they're on the verge of taking this with a lot more time in the time bank. New York needs to make something big happen right now. Liver on the Doomfist has to retreat. No help for him. And it's Mecco and Sabio. They make that just Mecco. Here comes the self-destruct. Going to force San Francisco off the point for a moment, but they've nearly taken it. And yeah. Mano, after that ice block, uh -oh, that's that about up. it. <laughs> Yep, that one didn't help. You don't want to be on top of the ice wall there if you're the defending May. And as soon as they get saved, you'll be. That is it. San Francisco manages to finish with 4.36 left on the clock. That does beat New York's time. It does, Doa. And Mato made some mechanical mistakes on the May. His first time on May, he didn't use his freeze because he got hit by a volley. And the second time, he misplaced his wall. Yeah. So he died on top of it instead. Could have been a bit longer there. Well, let's take a moment to listen to San Francisco's comms uh, back when they were taking point A. I'm going for What am I going? What am I going? What am I going? I'm on the I'm on the Someone, I'm purple. I don't see, I don't see. I don't see. Moki's really low. Diva, 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 Diva. Yeah, nice on map. I'm on map. Pop again, thanks. Yeah, I'm on map. Can we go for Anna? I'm on get you, I'm on get you. Get you, get you, get you, get you. I don't know then. Moki's one, Moki's one, Moki's one. I'm low, I'm low. Good on, huh? Nice, guys. Just a recall, just a recall, just a recall. Nice. Cool. Well, that was that was a good example of how team fights are a lot more than just yelling monkey, monkey, monkey over and over again. <laughs> you can hear them kind of calling them out, uh, calling out what abilities were down. Yes. You know, sleep dart was down. That's a big thing to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, when your team can react to that kind of stuff, that information puts together a pretty clean point take. Yeah, that that is crucial. There, you see the important abilities that they're tracking there: tracer recall, sleep dart. Yeah, these are the ones that that allows you to know if you can go in if they don't have sleep dart and if you can focus the tracer if there is no recall. Sure enough, well, here we go. Attack time again for New York Excelsior. They have a little bit less time in the time banks. They are going to go forth first and back to the dive for them. A bit more of what they ran the first time around. Baby Bay now on that 76 up on the high ground. Yeah, so they've actually swapped the point. This time, San Francisco Shock is playing the opposite side. Uh, where they know the supports like to wrap around uh, on the side of New York. So we're, we're seeing a bit of a changing strategy. They're trying to stay a bit more spread oh, out towards New York to do a different approach to this point. Well, Jonak tried to loop around anyway. Now he's surrounded, taken out. Not a lot of defense there for him, as the rest of New York just wasn't there. Libero gets taken out as well. That's and a, now it's just the tanks. That's a really solid read from New York. If you watch or from San Francisco, if you yeah. watched XL play Volskaya recently, including yesterday when we were casting them, they have favored this approach where they send the supports over. And what the shock realized is if you go into that small room and catch them while they're going up to the second yeah. level, the tanks are not going to be able to respond to it from New York. So you can kill those supports basically for free. New York is not going to be able to take that approach again. That's true enough. Dante has EMP ready to go. Another thing New York needs to be a little bit afraid of. Looks like they're all going to go on the left side. There's the hack in onto both tanks. They both got hit with that EMP, I believe. Dante a little bit low gets. Oh, but Save will be waiting for him. He found the translocator. San Francisco, though, winning a couple uh, more kills out of this fight here. Baby Bay, though, now with that attack visor pushed back. Low health gets the heals just in the last nick of time. Kills Ark before he's finally taken down. There's the self destruct from Nevix just to keep New York out of that room for as long as possible. Gets stuck, though. Oh, and he runs right towards Mono. That was dangerous oh. here. Meanwhile, Libero it was, dashing and slashing. It was all a setup to get Libero into the corridor to reset his dashes in the end. So New York looked like it was going to go pretty badly for them at the beginning, but the initial pick from SaveBLB, they jumped the tanks onto the high ground before moving the supports into the room that time, distracted them on the upper level, and Ooh. he's going to see some resets here. Well, that's Courtesy about it. Courtesy of Libero, when you line up the supports, perfectly timed with the D suit from Nevix. It's about as easy as it gets. Just dash, dash, dash. Here we go. New York coming into point B with a good amount of ultimates to use. Good amount of time on the clock as well. You only get 30 more seconds. It's going to be hard, though. Bank. San Francisco does have both of their support ultimates. Yep. Got to draw those out. That's going to be mission number one for Libero here. Tracking down Dante for the moment. There's one all down. Sleepy goes ahead and uses Transcendence. New York back on the high ground behind the point. Oh, Sleepy was punched out of the point itself by Mono during his ultimate. Oh, wow. Sleepy 
down as well. They used the sound barrier too. There's a hack coming in. Libero falls to the ground, but he can still back away. Able to wall climb his way out of it. San Francisco getting a couple of kills, but now Libero. Oh, no kills with that Dragon Blade. The good focus coming in from San Francisco and eliminating the Genji before he can get any work done. That was a five player EMP from the side of Dante. Solid. He cleans them up when they try and retake, realizing that Sleepy had already been killed. Mono invested his primal rage to move the trancing Zenyatta all the way outside of the main choke. Did get that kill, but it took both him and Sabioli to do it, and the response was Dante with the rest of his teammates hacking everybody on that attack. So San Francisco holding on here. Yeah, they are. Only a minute left for New York Excelsior. This next attack is gonna be there's the take. This is the one they need to make work. Baby Bay thinking about a pulse bomb there, but got pushed back. They grab some health pack, it looks like. Yep, it is there quite often because of that hack. And they know Dante. Oh, Baby Bay! Oh, he didn't get anything. I think that was eaten, actually. Did look like Echo. it. Echo, yeah. Sabiel B is still on the back flank right here. They're trying to set this up. Jodak gets a crucial kill onto Sleepy. Yeah, that's really big as they come in. Now, without that Zenyatta, he's not going to be building towards that ult anytime soon either. But the EMP could still be impactful. Dante coming in, looking for Jonak in the back. Jonak dodging around the side. They know he's there. Oh, but he can't do it. Only 50 HP after you get EMP. That's rough for any Zenyatta. That's a sneaky hack. He couldn't even get his trance off. He had worked his way all the way up. Ark has to throw down the sound barrier. That's right. And now San Francisco in prime position to defend this one. They're going to get mono, it looks like, here, too. Yeah, that's right. So San Francisco off the back of the EMP may be able to just hold here. If they can stop New York from even getting a tick, it would be massive. And it looks like they're with, they will. There goes Libero and a great hold on point B from San Francisco. Courtesy of Dante and his fantastic EMPs. He flanked around to the backside of New York's formation, found Jonak. Jonak did not preemptively hit the transcendence. He should have done that. We, we discussed yesterday, New York sometimes failing to sequence their ults correctly. Yeah. And you want to be able to use that transcendence, of course. You use that sound barrier, and then the EMP comes out, you lose all the benefit of the sound barrier. Well, the mind games between the Sombra player and the Zenyatta player are always really interesting to watch in the yeah. meta when uh, both of those heroes are big. And earlier in Volskaya, we did see Jonak use that transcendence a bit early because he thought Dante was yep. coming in with the EMP. Didn't happen that time. Now Jonak decides to hold his ult a little bit longer, thinking that maybe Dante is going to hold his too. But nope, Dante EMP. -ing. And once the Zenyatta gets EMP'd, you are not going to last very long. Right, like you want to trance, you want to trance as the EMP comes in to protect people because if you use the sound barrier first, then it gets eliminated by the EMP. So you have to wait right. until the EMP is out to use the sound barrier. There's always this communication and thought process going on with the professional players about how best to play these scenarios. And Ark did get a sound barrier off after the EMP happened, but right. unfortunately, Jonak already dead by that time. And they were in a tough situation where they had to keep both of their supports alive. Yeah. Five, Talked about tracking four, abilities that were on three, cooldown earlier. Two, you gotta track when those ultimates one, are up on the other team too. Gotta learn uh, how to estimate those times. Now, San Francisco on the attack. A little bit more time in the time bank than New York had. Baby Bay will take the Widowmaker this time around. And yeah, they know they just need a pick here and they can power themselves to Victory as long as they get one tick on point B. Yep. Ark though, in the back. Jonak there as well. We've seen these guys do a good job of keeping themselves safe against the Tracer. Save will be meanwhile, looking to try to strike the back lines of the Shock. He's trying to harass Baby Bay if he can. Got that too. It's Baby Bay's staying very far up, tentatively approaching the high ground right now. Oh, they know where Dante is at least. Now, all the members of the Shock are on that side now. They're making a slow push onto the high ground. There we go, Libero down to about half health. He's in a little bit of trouble now. Finally gets the healing from Jonak in the end, courtesy of that Orb of Harmony. Sleepy down though, Jonak, he seems to always find these picks in the Zen versus Zen. It's crazy, Dak there with the res though. So Sleepy back in the fight again. But now Dante a little bit low. Save will be nearly takes him down. Libero, low health. Got the Reflect up, Dante finishes him off. Save will be ops to not go after that fight instead, trying to put more pressure onto San Francisco. New York made this same mistake yesterday playing against a Widowmaker Mercy. Nano boost on the Mano. It's a Mano boost as he pushes back, and that's a lot of damage coming in. 
That's a D-Mech on the Nevix, man. That Winston can do a lot with that uh, Ana ultimate. Does have to back off, though. Get healed up by the Ana once again. San Francisco have yet to really put any pressure on the point, Boom. though. And Libero catches Dante on the side. Jonak uses the Transcendence. Yeah, well, this fight is going to be tough for San Francisco to continue, especially now that they've lost Dak. Yeah, they lost uh, their, one of their tanks early on, too. So now New York with a few ultimates to use, and they've... Uh, Feel, they're feeling pretty comfortable, I think, right now. I like the Shocker using the strategy, though. They are switching it now. But if you watch New York play against Philly yesterday, you know that they overcommitted on a dive defense to a Widowmaker, traded Libero uh, for a Widowmaker, but then the Widowmaker was rezzed. So it could start. Oh, that's a nice. Another nice opening wow. there. Just right clicking around a corner. Dude, well, you know, we know how much uh, damage Jonak does on this turn, and a lot of that, or a lot of this team, rather. A lot of that comes from those long-range picks. You know what corners are going to be coming around. And yeah, he's done about 2,000 more damage than Sleepy in this match so far. Wow. So San Francisco having to wait a bit more for Dante to come back. Now they're ready to push again. Down to just under two minutes left, though. I mean, they had a bigger time bank, but a lot of it's getting used up. And that's a long flank from San Francisco. This attack needs to pay off. Otherwise, that's a lot of time used for nothing. Here we go, Primal Rage already from the New York side. Save will be waiting. Pulse Bomb comes in, did he get the stick? No, not quite, but he's got Sleepy a little bit alone here. Dak down, Libero dashes through, and now Save will be back on the point. Waiting things out, you gotta wait for that transcendence to be done for San Francisco Shock. If you are New York, there's the self-destruct now. Gonna do some damage to the Winston. Oh, Baby Bay caught by Libero's Dragon Blade. And now Nevix in a bit of trouble here as he comes down right into the damage from the DPS. And New York again will hold. That was another long flank from the Shock. That time, they switch up their heroes. They try and stay grouped up and punish the dive using a flashbang. But Baby Bay doesn't find a flashbang target. And they get picked apart. Now they have to rush for the point itself. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much their last major attack. It's less than a minute remaining. New York with two support ultimates to work I mean, with. They have a dead eye. This is not looking good for the Shock. All they've got is a dead eye, and they're not close to anything else. It'd be an incredible fight if they pulled it off. Let's see what they can do. Mano trapped a little bit in that room, but now the transcendence from Jonah comes in in time to save him. Dead eye time, and he gets save. will be actually that's something. But Mano comes in with the nano boost again, and he's got the support zoned out. Winston's in this league are getting so good at doing that. And New York shuts down that attack pretty hard. Yep. Nevix gonna get staggered too. Oh, it is not looking good for Shock with just about 10 seconds remaining. When you don't have time to set up your approach, that's what can happen. Supports get siphoned off. Yep. And it's the nano boosted Winston and the Genji that end up taking away all of the healing from San Francisco. Dante's gonna touch the point, so they will get overtime. That last ditch effort here from San Francisco. They gotta get a lot done with a little here. Dak and Sleepy on the side of the fight. They need to stay alive. San Francisco sticking together oh, as a unit right grenade. now. They're not getting healing from the trance. Not a lot, no. Not with an Ana Grenade coming in, and Jonak's gonna take advantage. There's a DMAC onto Nevix here. Now the Primal Rage from Mano just pushing people off the point. Overtime expiring, and no one can get back. New York Excelsior will take Sky Industries. That's right, looked good for San Francisco at the beginning, but they do get shock blocked in the end. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they certainly do. New York holding strong in the time bank on San Francisco's second attack. It was such a good first round for the team in orange, but NYXL coming out on top in our first map here. So plenty of time to make it back. Lee Jung Tower is going to be coming up next for our control. Fair enough. San Francisco already making this one a bit competitive, so I think we've got a good series to look forward to here. We will we be back with map number two, guys. Do not go anywhere. More Overwatch League coming up. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Omened by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League.
Nevix, San Francisco shot. Westervik, Spiel. Nevix is so brutal with the back line. He was everywhere on the back. I was actually in a team for Overwatch before Overwatch came out. I actually dropped off of school to play it, so like, I started very early. It was Nevix to clean that kill up. What is going on? I'm looking forward to playing against the Koreans, most of all, and show that we can be as strong. Nevix, huge from him. Four kills in the fight for the Diva player. You love to see it. My goals for this season are just to be as good as I can be, be the best teammate possible, and try to win. Well, despite taking a loss against New York in their first map, San Francisco, I think, really did show us a, a pretty decent level of play here. Some of that definitely due to Nevix on that D.Va as usual. Yeah, and uh, Nevix has been great since entering the Overwatch League. For those of you who don't know, he did win multiple tournaments before Overwatch League even began. Yep. He uh, has played basically every position, DPS support, and now off tank. So we know he's, he's been, got a mean Genji, too. Yeah, he, he uh, has been a great player across a variety of roles now. And so, obviously, we were we had some questions about him moving to that off-tank role coming into the Overwatch League, but he has been steadfast on this roster. He's been one of their best players. Well, it's really kind of the, the kind of player you want in that off-tank role, almost. But someone on the D.Va who needs to be very aware of what's happening to the other members on the team. And if you've got experience playing those positions, then you kind of have that sixth sense uh, knowing where to be as D.Va that's sort of like uh, built in. Yeah, I know from talking to the Shock staff too, they always praise his work ethic, his dedication to practice and to the game of Overwatch and really does show in terms of his personal results. Absolutely. Well, here we go to Lijiang Tower, our second map of the day, our control map. A little bit of best of three King of the Hill action here. And we can see on our screen, our secret caster screen, that we will be starting on gardens here, so. I'm a little bit disappointed. I do hope we oh, get yeah. to see some control center because that's always my favorite point <laughs> on this map too. <laughs> Yesterday it was it was very weird. The the New York XL ran Sombra on that point to abuse uh, some of the uh, the tactics of multiple tanks, junk rats that you see, right? Uh, making sure they get the big EMPs on the open center point of that map. Yeah, you play around, that, uh, play around that big health pack in the back and play heroes that are able to uh, leap up or fly up and take advantage of that. And it really does kind of mess with the, the popular triple tank shield oriented style we've seen on control center. So we'll see if we end up uh, seeing that a little bit later today. For now though, we are going to gardens. San Francisco not changing up their tactics. Five, they have four, overwhelmingly three, preferred Tracer two, and Soldier or Tracer on McCree across one, all points one, on Lee Jong Tower. Yep, that's right. Libero on the other side on the Farah, as we see pretty often from him. This will be New York. They will expect the Soldier 76, but you think so, yeah. Hasn't really stopped Libero in the past. We'll see if it does now. Oh, Mecco getting stopped early here. Both Divas, in fact, getting D Mech'd. Bad day for Mex, apparently. Dante recalls he was nearly booped off the edge, but he'll be okay now. And yeah. San Francisco on the point early. Yeah, however, the difference is is that Mecco died. Meanwhile, Nevix is only out of Mech. However, this is going to result in a scenario where it's a six versus six, but only one D.Va in a Mech right now. Yeah, that counts for a lot, man. The D.Va in the Mech going to do a lot more. Baby Bay going down early just to illustrate my point. Thank you, Baby Bay. Meanwhile, Libero finds Doc with the Rockets as well. And yeah, just like you said, man, that D.Mech D.Va, when it comes down to it, you almost kind of wish you fell off the edge there. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And that's something that the San Francisco Shock could have uh, changed in that in that fight. Because you have to remember, there's tons before the control of the point even unlocks. So if you watch New York, yeah, they give up Mecco, but by the time the control point unlocks and New York can contest it, he's already back in a mech, and they're hiding from beyond line of sight, so Nevix isn't able to get his mech up very quickly, yep. and they end up fighting down a D.Va mech. So that's just great work from New York, and you have to consider those scenarios if they're shocked. Maybe you, uh, you chuck the D.Va off the cliff in that case. Another early pick from Jonak onto Dante. Baby Bay gonna pop his tag visor just to zone out New York. But look at this, they're gonna come back into this fight with nearly all their ultimates. San Francisco now the ones pushed back into the hallway. There goes Baby Bay. They may not even need to use very many ultimates to take the point here. Uh, no, they're, they're not gonna use very many at it. all. And Mono nearly up to his primal rage, meaning that New York coming back with six ultimates. Uh oh, save Yelby. All right, leaping over, try and get that pulse bomb. Not going to work out. Meanwhile, Libero just keeping that bridge covered. 
Barrage, perhaps incoming tunes, sound barriers for both sides right now. San Francisco trying to retake, there goes Dak though, Jonak with another one as well, and Libero over the top, there's the boop, oh, doesn't even need it. Sleepy not getting a chance to fall off the edge. And San Francisco getting shut down hard here on this map. Uh, this point has been a disaster so far for the Shock. They only have one kill, and that was the elimination they got at Mecco at the start of this map. That's insane. Seems like that's not even possible, but that's the situation we're in. 90% right now. Jonak gets jumped on. Got the transcendence there. Decides to use it. Went down to about 40 HP. Both sends ulting. Libero waiting it out. Could be barrage time soon. No, it's not. Nevik somehow gets him with the self-destruct. There's the stick on the sleepy good kill from Savial D, but it's San Francisco who will take the point and finally get some control percent building. Yes, they will. Libero, the only one with an ult now. New York Excelsior coming back with a barrage, but little else. Fabiel B, it's like he is going to escape the dash back through the choke point and the help of a large health pack. That's 99% for NYXL right now, San Francisco. It's gonna take a while to get to where they need to be. It's gonna be a long approach though for New York around the back side. We have Sabiolbi, Jonak, and Libero. They may try a pincer here. Mono, Mecco, and Ark are still standing at the bridge. They're gonna run right over. They're gonna try and get a barrage. Oh, that's a plan. The barrage comes in. Baby Bay down. Nevix absorbing, absorbing a lot of that damage and finishing Libero off. Dante actually coming around the side with the kill onto Jonak. So, New York trying for the pincer. Doesn't work out. They're gonna keep pushing, though. The tanks just trying to be annoying, I guess. But you're gonna have to back away if you're NYXL. At some point, they lose. Save you'll be. Mano's trying to get the Zenyatta, doesn't get it, gets Ooh stuck boy. instead. Oh, that may have been a bit of an overcommitment by New York to keep trying to take the point despite losing two people early. Well, they still have some percent left to go, Doa, but it was really Dante who saved that. Dante realized that Jonak and Sabiobi were coming around the opposite side, went doubled back to kill Jonak and save the fight for his team. So Dante, his sense of positioning getting better with each passing week of the Overwatch League. That's right, Sabiobi drops early, or uh, rather, Baby Bay drops early, Sabiobi waiting for a chance to use that pulse bomb. More ultimates from the Zen, there's a stick and he gets back. That's a problem for San Francisco. Now time to charge out of the point for NYXL. A couple more ultimates to use. Both Divas self-destructing in each other's faces. No kills from either one, though, but it doesn't matter because Sabiel B is just untouched. Going crazy. Now he has to back. Whoa, that was a close one. Nearly missed his blink, but he's back in action. He gets Dante. Sabiel B. Uh, however, there are no healers right now. It's just Mono and Sabi will be on the point, and San Francisco is starting to respawn. Well, we're in overtime right now. San Francisco trying to retake. New York owns it at the moment. There goes Nomi. Mano backing away. 10 health, 0 health now. And Sabi will be. It's on him. He's got to do a lot. That's something. Stick on to Sleepy and Ark. Meanwhile, gets the big boop on to Nevix. You can see from the kill feed, he got him when he was still in the mech. Libero has a blade, so he can clean up this point. That's right, and he does. Stack down, there goes Dante, and over time ticks. And that's gonna be point A, or point one rather, on this map, going to NYXL. Close, though. San Francisco battling back after a disastrous first part to that point to push us all the way to 99-99. Dante, okay. again, he... You know, we don't see a lot of the stuff that he does because oftentimes he is the one shutting down flanks, but his situational awareness gets better and he's delivering the kills he needs to to shut down pincer attacks. That's right. San Francisco responding pretty well to New York. What they're trying to do in the end, New York kind of just having to brawl that one out. Bye. And now we are going to Night Market for our second point here on Lijiang Tower. Baby Bay on the Fara. Okay, yeah, we see the Fara on Night Market once in a while, but I think this is something that New York may not quite be expecting. No, they will not. It's not what San Francisco has been doing on My Night Market recently, but oh. always has been a hero in Baby Bay's pool. Yep, we know he plays it, we know he plays it well. Oh, did he get the boop? That was so close, man. Jonak nearly knocked off. 
Galaxy trying to get inside the point itself with Afara, spamming those rockets through the doorway, chunking people out as they approach. The dangerous place to be, though. Another boot comes in. Looks like Jonax stays back on it again. Baby Bay getting pretty close, but he's got the heals from Sleepy now on that Mercy. There's a big kill on Nemano. Libero trying to reflect, but it ends early. Oh, only 27 health left for Baby Bay. Make it four. Can he stay alive? Save will be nearly finishing him off, but the healing comes in. Oh, but it's not enough as Libero gets him with the dash. There's a nice pulse bomb onto Ark, though. Dante picking up the slack here for San Francisco Dante. in a big way. Dante helping his team so much here. Get the kills one by Don't one. He's looking for Jonak. Oh. He's going to get him. Kind of at the headshot coming around the corner, and that's going to be San Francisco, or New York, rather, flipping that point over. Interesting. Yeah, Dante was on the point that basically alone, stalling it out that entire time, and now he's Six. waiting for his teammates. That's right, he was able to hold it for a little while. New York, though, big sound barrier from on high for Ark. They gotta get kills out of that. Now a little bit later sound barrier from San Francisco, so they can have that shielding for a bit longer. New York falling back a bit, but then when they fall back, San Francisco takes the point. And they are gonna try and use the Valkyrie here, too. They want to flip it. Libero's gonna get an opportunity, get a big Dragon Blade on the point, though. Oh, that's two already. San Francisco not able to stop him. Baby Bay drops a barrage. He gets Mono, but they're gonna need a bit more. And New York gonna retake. Mono will gladly sacrifice himself to eliminate the Farah, considering New York had already won that fight, unless the barrage got multiple kills. So jump straight into it. Causes Baby Bay to kill himself with the splash damage. That'll happen. And now setting up again for the NYXL. Evic Zanomi, the only ults up or even close to ult up on the side of the shock, might be difficult to retake. They have to do an eco push here. That's a battle of tracers here. Save will be trying to find out with Dante, who gets a little bit low. Now a bit of help coming from Dax. Save will be asked to back away. San Francisco halfway towards flipping the point again. And Jonak getting juggled. Oh, but Dax. Oh, Jonak with the revenge. Nomi had to try to flee, but Jonak was ready, calling the angle with that orb. That was beautiful. And look at this, New York doesn't get baited in. Primal Rage from Nomi, but only the Pulse Bomb used by Sabiobi, which he can build up very quickly again. Yep. And because Dak and Sleepy died in that fight without doing much healing, they now have to fight a, a final battle against what will be two support ults from the New York and two stall ults with the Primal Rage and the Self-Destruct. Again, San Francisco comes into this last battle with a glaring ult economy deficit. You think it's going to be at least 99% for New York. For New York. We will see, though. San Francisco coming in. Sound barrier used on the New York side. Jonak waiting it out. There's the Transcendence now. No means sleepy. Already down. Libero putting that Dragon Blade to use as he finishes off Nevix and Baby Bay. And we're into overtime. And it looks like it's going to be a 2-0 for NYXL here on Lijiang Tower. That was nearly an impossible situation for San Francisco. You talk about the ults you want in those last minute scenarios you have two support ultimates and you have two ults that you can push people off the point or stall with in terms of the self-destruct of the primal rage very hard for san francisco to make their way back into that one xl showing poise and patience on the last part of that map to ensure their ult economy was in great shape sure enough you know i know we talk about jonak a lot but he is having a stellar day too Halftime coming up, guys. Don't go anywhere. The desk breaks it down right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network.
Well, their high five game might not be on point, but their Overwatch game <laughs> certainly is today. You try. Oh, no, no. no does it happen again? Oh, left him oh, hanging. Man. Left him hanging. All right, what's going on, everyone? Golden Boy here at the desk for the half. NYXL up 2-0 to zero over the San Francisco Shock. You hate to see it happen. That's Kevin. Joe Knack, though. He doesn't care about your high fives. It's all about the game for him. Concentration. You can't let your hand off the right hand or right mouse right button. Right hand thing of the hand or your stuff. Zinata, you know, the right, right mouse button. RMB. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, let's hope they could just, you know, Tighten that up moving forward. Uh, all right, so uh, gentlemen, let's go ahead and, and, and jump right into this. Uh, talk about uh, Volskaya here um, because, yep. you know, San Francisco Shock at the beginning. It was their map to win, right? Yes, exactly. Yes, it was their map to win because they had such an advantage going into the second round, uh, if that's how you want to put it, of course. Now, they did have a pretty solid defense with Dante on the Sombra, of course. So that was really impressive coming up. We know that Dante is one of the best Sombras in the league, I would say. And if the current uh, changes on the live servers, of course, are going to be implemented into Overwatch League, I think that San Francisco will really benefit from these. Well, I yeah, think they benefited true. from playing a little bit faster. I feel like they're just taking their sweet time and setting up a lot of these plays. And by taking so much time, you're giving the enemy team a lot of opportunity for their own setup, which is never good. You can always be quicker on the aggression. You get more attacks. You can have them be more successful, get more picks, as opposed to being like, oh, we'll go for three pushes in one offense and be as coordinated as possible. One mistake happens, and then the amount of time you've wasted grows exponentially. There are a lot of signs behind yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, no, there are. And it is very, <laughs> but one thing though, uh, and they're awesome. Uh, it is very clear though that when the San Francisco Shock want to go toe to toe, when they want to, you know, to box above their weight class, they certainly can do yeah. it. Yeah. They That's have the, the capability. They've shown. Yeah. It's been very impressive to see San Francisco actually come to life this stage. I think that in week one or so, we started to think, oh, you know, it's the same old San Francisco. They're not as impressive. Mm -hmm. But really, in stage two, I mean, they've started to, you know, beat these uh, teams, starting with Dallas, of course. Uh, they beat the Dallas 3-2-0, of course. And now, I mean, they're, they're going pretty close with the New, New York XL. There's so many signs. Yeah, there are a lot. There are a lot. Let Diva <laughs> crouch while in mech. I agree with I, that yeah, one. We need that. Uh, we need Nami that. making Mexico proud. Awesome. That's what's up there. There's a lot of text on that one that I am incapable of reading because I barely speak the English language. Um, so, yeah, you know, the awesome stuff. It's signed Saturday here at the Overwatch League. Uh, all right, we got a telestration. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, go ahead. Run, run through it. What, so, what do you have for me, bud? I want to go back to a fight that Monty highlighted in the cast. And it's pretty, the last fight that New York Excelsior has here on the uh, Volskaya. So they have double support ultimate coming up with that D.Va self-destruct coming up, of course. So this is a fight they should win. And you can see that the time is running out, 28 seconds is remaining, and they've started the fight. Libro and Mon is on aggression, Saibiolbi is looking forward as well, and Mekko is on the point. So this is a fight that they started to engage in and that they should win. But I just want to pinpoint the extreme, um, I guess, the patience coming out of uh, Dante, yeah. of course, on the Sombra, because he has his CMP up. So we're going to scribble forward here, and there's a very small detail here that people might miss. So as New York Excelsior is attacking, they're taking some damage, trying to set this fight up. Now, right around here. Yeah, okay, perfect. So here we see, we see Ark yep. is hiding up in the corner here because he just doesn't want to be hit by the EMP. Mm. He wants to be able to drop the sound barrier once the EMP comes in to save the rest of his team. But Jonak, as we take a look into zooming in, this is the healing orb trail coming out of the Senyara. So Jonak is forced forward from San Francisco because Libro has taken so much damage in the very last fight of the game. So Jonak is forced to step forward and put this healing orb onto Libro. And as such, Dante, I mean, you can already see it. He is underway using About his EMP here exactly when he needs to. Such incredible patience coming out, of course, from the San Francisco shock. And I mean, that, that was just fantastic. You see the yeah. patience, the healing orb is so crucial. They need it in this fight to keep Libro up. And as such, San Francisco capitalized. Amazing play. I mean, it's, it's, it's disheartening to see that you have these very good individual plays come out of the San Francisco shock, yet they still fall flat on their face when it comes to taking the game off yeah. of New York Excel. Like they're, they're stepping up to the plate as individuals, but they're, they're still missing that element as a team where they're just, using ultimates in a questionable way, not staggering abilities properly. Like you have some times where they're dying and then ultimates get blown out to try to save members where it just wasn't necessary. Like I think we saw attack visor used against a, a barrage, which is just sitting there in, in midair. You don't really I need mean, to need the aim. Extra aim. 
right? <laughs> you know, maybe maybe got the DPI too high, right? Maybe just needs to, <laughs> just needs to steady that shot a bit. No, I, I totally that's why agree play with Winston. you guys. Yeah, that's have famous Winston. Yeah. <laughs> Best <you're in> <laughs> and, and Reinhardt. You just swing the hammer, baby. Yeah, yeah. That's all you got to do. All right, well, let's move on to uh, to Li Jiang Tower here. Um, again, kind of hoping to see uh, San Francisco Shock bounce back. Some signs of life from this team, especially here, where they were able to flip it at the end and try and see if they could rally back, get back into this game. But NYXL, they just adapt so quickly and they punish SF. Well, I mean, they have been, if they're punished, they are grounded for life after this one because Sapiobi was 8-0 and taking down the Zenyatas in this matchup. Cool. Whereas, and Zenyatas never took him out. Whereas you have Dante trying to take on Jonek and it was 7-6. to Jonek is basically trading against this Tracer in a 1v1 fashion, which becomes very difficult. You know, you have Sapiobi just taking out Sleepy nonstop and nobody's there to take him on. That was even a tack visor from Baby Bay to try to deal with the trade. Yeah, so but also it comes so down to the support duos, of course, because yeah. you have the Lucius by your side. So yes, you are correct in your analysis, of course, um, but you need to pinpoint, you know, can Dak maybe help out a bit more with, uh, for Sleepy, of course, because you need to, if you have a solid support duo in the Overwatch League, you are doing so much good work. Okay. We see these top teams, we see Ark, Jonak, we see Verlano Spitfire, they have uh, Bedosin and uh, Closer, of course, and then you see Seoul Dynasty, Rija Hong and Toby. I mean, these are amazing support duos. So you really need to help each other so out. So actually then, uh, let's poise the question though, because San Francisco was built from the DPS. They started building the team from DPS, whereas we're really seeing that support and tank should maybe have been the core and the foundation of where you build a team, teams that have these strong CPS or rather tank and support duos have been really successful. So is that has that been a fundamental mistake? Possibly? I think it's all based on just the the style of which that they want to tackle, right? Like every yes. team has their own individual approach. And you think about uh, San Francisco Shock, sure, they're thinking about their, their DPS core because they do have not only players that are waiting on the wings looking to get in here in Sinatra and Super, uh, but then you also have, you know, the the talent on, on the tank side with, with Nomi and, and Nevix and, and whatnot too. I think it's just a matter of what the identity is of the team and whether or not they want to build from the DPS or want to build from the support core. But I won't disagree but with you that supports are important. Can your identity be wrong? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a loaded <laughs> question. That question's like meta. You know? I, would, I, would yeah. say I yes. wanted to hear yes. See, there I you go. Say yes. See? Yeah. All right. I mean, I guess that's, that's I, I, I don't, I don't want to need. talk too long about it because it's a big topic. But yes, I will say that. Right. I feel like you, you need to start from the ground up. The, the yeah. pillars that expand to everything else, which are tanks and supports. Well, you know, it's just like the common phrase in, in you know, football, right? Like defense. Football or soccer? Champ, uh, oh, I'm talking about, you know, football. What we have here in the United States. You realize the America, entire world, you know? except the United States, calls oh, it that's football. Another that's, big another, that's another that's big topic for another day. Man, but that's the point already that been trying settled. Say, it's football. The point that I'm trying to say is that you, in football, you start <laughs> with building a fantastic defense because defense wins championships. So maybe it is the same thing here. That is the question. I want to see Overwatch. I, the, he wants to see Overwatch. I, I do too. Overwatch. I think everyone wants to see Overwatch as well. The time for Overtalk is done. Guys, coming up next, we're going to have games three and four. Can San Francisco turn this around or will NYXL dominate? Don't go anywhere. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Omened by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League.
with Squash. Hey, Squash. How you doing? I'm doing amazing, guys. How's the? How's everybody doing? Yeah. You're awesome, Squash. Now, I have to know, how did you get that name, Squash? I, I really want to know. Yeah, so Squash, uh, when I was a real little kid, which is hard to believe, quite, quite frankly, I really, really liked that, like, baby squash food. So, yeah, everybody called me Squash from there on. Quite frankly, now I can't even stand the taste of it. It's terrible. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. And you are an awesome super fan, and we really thank you for being here. Also, so you, could, you drove, like, five hours down here, and this isn't your first time here. So how is your experience here in Blizzard Arena? Yeah, you know, the Blizzard Arena is amazing. Um, um, the best part is the people. And that's really what's bringing me back. Um, I drove out last month from Wisconsin out here to California, and I had to stop here. On the way here, I stopped down in Austin, met a lot of friends who I met playing Overwatch. They made me an awesome sign, and it really made my experience so much better. Convinced a friend to fly out here last time, somehow, and it was just so great. Quite frankly, I have to keep coming back. It, like, the five-hour drive is nothing at this point. And it's just, it's so much fun to be here, guys. Yes, well, that's awesome, Squash, you rock. Thank you so much. We're going to throw it on over to our casters, Monty and Doa, guys. Take it away. All right, thank you. That's great, man. A lot of awesome fans in the audience today, and all the way from Wisconsin. Wow. Yeah, just like you. That's right. I came all the way from Wisconsin at some point in the past. That is true. Yeah. At William? some point. At some point in the past. In the right? distant past. A couple now. different places in between there, but I am here now, originally in Wisconsin. That is true. We're getting old, though. We are. No, no, we're not. Don't say that. Maybe you are. I'm not. I am forever young. I was always ancient obviously. on the inside. As That's we right. Know. An old soul. That's how we think of Monte Cristo. It's a sub guy. Janice coming in for Mono as we look forward to Hollywood. And this is an interesting one for New York because actually in stage two, this is going to be their first game on, New on Hollywood. Yeah, interestingly, now that they are in the second half of their games of stage two, their first five matches, they played all on King's Row, and their last five matches, they will be playing all on Hollywood. Hey, well, makes it a little bit easier to practice, I guess. It does streamline the practice schedule, you have to True imagine, enough. but it also means we have no idea what they're going to do here, may just resort back to the dive. However, the shock, they are cut from the same cloth as we've seen the Gladiators, sometimes they do like to run attack Sombra here. They are a Sombra heavy team. And I wonder if we shall be seeing that once again or whether it'll be something a little bit more standard. Go back to the Tracer Soldier that we know from them so well at this point. Right. Well, it's going to be New York on the attack first. So we'll get a look at what they're going to be running on this map or at least what they're going to try first anyway as they head into this map. And, you know, they've done very well on hybrid. They are undefeated on uh, King's Row. Yeah. So that was, uh, yes. yeah. So coming into this one, this map type has been good for them in stage two. Absolutely has been. It's like San Francisco going to cover all of their bases with this composition. They are running McCree just in case. Libero decides to pull out the Sombra on attack. See, Nomi needs that shield there because Nevix is throwing chairs at him. <laughs> we noticed, knocking him off the roof there. <laughs> Chucking chairs onto the point. It's dangerous stuff. Don't want to take a seat on the point, though. You stay too long there. I don't think so, no. Not going to end well for you. Yep, maybe hit somebody with a chair, though. Maybe WWE style or something like that. Just leaping from the top of the building. That's more Golden Boy's speed, I think. Yeah, uh, he can be a hero that just hits people with chairs. <laughs> Make Golden Boy a hero. There we go. <laughs> That's the next sign. Here we go, NYXL on the attack, and Libero back on the Hanzo again. We've seen him run it a lot on King's Row, and we wondered if he was going to run it on Hollywood. Well, he's not. He's on the Genshin. Oh, <laughs> it, has been, it has been a hero that teams historically in Overwatch have won uh, run on Hollywood, but you can. we're not going to get it here. They are just going to use that Sonic Arrow to scout out and then change right back into the dive. Yep. That's right, so there, reinforced got his wish. I mentioned Libro's Hanzo today. Congratulations. <laughs> New York on the point already. The setting up the reflect is Libro, and they have to back away for just a moment here. Libro may try to flank around the outside here. The tanks trying to jump up in the cafe. I think they got pulled out a little bit by the halt. Ooh, that's a vulnerable looking Mercy. Libro on the baby bay now a little bit too. Reflect comes in, doesn't want to get flashbanged. Nevix d mech a good start for New York. Now Nomi, oh, that's a big pulse bomb. Jonak finishes him off, and Libero gets stunned a bit by the flashbang, but it doesn't matter. Baby Bay cut down anyway. And although a couple kills from the supports, 
It looks like it's going to be New York coming out on top in this fight for the moment. Nomi is back. Not rezzed, but he's only going to last a short time, and that's going to be the payload moving for New York Excels here. I'm really surprised that San Francisco wanted to give up that much room, but when you have the Orisa, you want to be able to stay on the point. And yes, you're trying to stay in the doorway, block it off with your shield, but a dive comp should not be bullying anybody off the point or getting percent for free. Dive compositions should have to kill people before they can take the point, not just slowly shove you off of it. Especially yeah, when you have odd. a Mercy. They, I, you could just stand there and heal the Orisa. That was, I think, the shock playing too scared. Oh, sound barrier is New York getting aggressive here. They want to use this to get in. Deflect Baby Bay. That's going to work out. Two kills for Libero. Oh, man, that was a great answer to taking back the high ground. This is what you want to do on this stage in Hollywood. And uh, they're playing the they're playing the high ground well as you say. Find a flank for the Dragon Blade and free payload movement for the NYXL through Westworld. Dude, I love it. You just use the sound barrier, use that extra shielding to just get up on the roof and go straight at the Widowmaker. Yeah, cute plays. Also the orb of Discord. You can see the how good teams will use the dive, setting up the targets with the Discord or before sending the DPS in to finish off kills. Yep. And now NYXL and firm control the high ground for the moment. Making sure San Francisco can't set back up there. Baby Bay has that infrasight popped, it looks like. So he knows where all of New York are at the moment. Ooh. Be careful if you're Savy or a Save, Savy Bay. That's a combination of Savy Bay and Baby Bay, apparently. <laughs> going to be the primal rage. Libero down, actually. Janus just trying to bounce everybody off, but there's the self-destruct. Mecco, is he going to get anybody with that one? Hard to say. No, not quite. Xavier B goes in for the kill on Nomi, but it's going to be Janus that finishes him off again. Dante super low on the side, but they are going to have a respawn advantage. Libero uh -oh. switching to the Widowmaker and re-entering this fight. Uh, it wasn't a stick, but it was enough damage from Xavier B's Pulse Bomb for them to finish off. Dak comes in to just... You know, try to stall a little bit, why not? Yeah, it's letting the bodies hit the cart, Doa. Yeah, let the bodies hit the cart. <laughs> Gotta do it. Song from high school, I think it was. Yeah, you can't even throw yourself under the wheels here because all of them hover. That's true. You Slow kinda, it down a little bit more. <laughs> just kind of limbo underneath it, really. <laughs> How low could you go? All right. Time to move the payload through point C. It's been blazingly fast for NYXL so far. Yeah, Libero swapped to the Widow temporarily to, because he knew he was going to have the sight lines as San Francisco's shock struggled yeah. to approach the payload. But now he's back on the Genji. More valuable here in the end, Baby Bay, switching to the McCree so that he can stop some of these divers. Yeah, you're going to be a bit more close range there. Nomi, Primal Rage. Trying to just be annoying. Oh, and he is. Shonak feels the strength. But Sableby comes in for the revenge. That didn't grab anyone with that pulse bomb. But uh, now Nevix nearly getting demacked here. Dante finding a kill onto Janus actually with his pulse bomb. But New York still coming out ahead again in this fight. Libero, man, he has been just dueling people left and right. The target selection from New York is exquisite on these pushes. They kill people on an individual level so fast. You see Libero and Sableby teaming up on specific targets. And it is leading them to a blazing fast time on yeah. Hollywood. That's right, San Francisco needs to stop it right here. Nevix getting fired upon. They need to get the respawns in there too. Valkyrie from Dak, both support ultimates used by San Francisco. New York gonna back out, wait that one out. They haven't lost anybody yet. If they can wait till the support ultimate serve, and they do, now they can get back on the point. Save will be down though. Dante coming up big along with Baby Bay. There's a res onto Sleepy from Dak. And so San Francisco will end up holding this. It looked like for a moment it was gonna be okay because New York just kind of waited the support ults out, but it's all right. win the ensuing fight. If you're New York, you're fine with losing that fight. You've lost hardly any fights all, uh, throughout the entirety of Hollywood so far. And that means you're going to get both support ults out. You can come back with two support ults, uh, ults of your own, combine it with the Dragon Blade, team wipe the shock, and win the map. That's the plan. Liberals got the blade. Dante, wondering how those monitors stay on despite being knocked off the wall and shattered. I wanted the same thing too, Dante. <laughs> False bomb. Oh, he doesn't get the stick and everyone just separates. That's a rough one. Oh no, it gets rougher. Janus stomps him into the ground. Happy Mario Day. And here we go. Transcendence is up. Sound barrier nearly there for Ark. That's right. Libero waiting for that. Save you'll be again. Oh, no! That is a huge self-destruct. No Janus kidding. and Libero. A little that bit of was... mispositioning there. Nevix. 
able to capitalize on that one. That, that was a little greedy from yeah. New York. They could have used a transcendent. Save Yobi has died to Babyface McCree in back-to-back -back fights right now, early on both occasions. They're waiting for both support alts before they pulled the trigger. And now they're gonna have to deal with Sleepy's trance. All right, they've got a lot of ultimates to use on their end too, so. A solidly executed fight should still finish it for him, but San Francisco has been holding well here at the end of point C. It's high noon. It's dive time, too, for NYXLs. They come in with the sound barrier. No ult happening here for the McCree. Libero now pulls out the Dragon Blade, gets the D-Mech onto Nevix, and the rest of his team tearing apart. San Francisco Shock, now Nomi with the Primal Rage, just going to try to delay for as long as he can. A solid stall from the Shock, but they're going to get cleaned up. Maybe they on the Genji right now. Dak trying to come back in to save this payload. Yeah, you can only delay for so long, but they have managed to hold it off long enough for Nevix to come back. But the payload, oh, it might get there. Nevix finished off, and that's going to be it. So it could have been a much faster time for New York, but San Francisco holding pretty well at the end of it. New York still getting three points anyway. Yeah, Nevix and Baby Bay clutch to hold on as long as they did. It could have ended with about two and a half, three minutes left in the bank. And as it stands, NYXL only have 52 seconds. Yeah, so that's not that bad if you're San Francisco. I mean, yeah, you don't want to let people finish. And Hollywood is definitely one of those maps where you can stop the payload before the end of point C. That one gets a bit tricky, but you know, at least you held your opponent to under a minute in the time bank. Definitely. Now we'll see what an NYXL defense looks on like on Hollywood for the first time. And it looks like... Looking like Dive at the moment. Well, they've got a Junkrat, so oh, maybe okay. they will go with the Junkrat and the Mercy on the defense, try and control the point that way. A junkrat, very effective on point A here for defense. There's uh, some pretty narrow chokes you need to come through as the attacker, and it's kind of annoying when you've got a lot of grenades coming at you. Yeah, I'm curious if... San Francisco is going to go back to the Sombra play that we've seen from them as well on attack here. So they are going to set up on the high ground right now. And Junkrat will be able to use those concussion mines to move fluidly between the opposite sides of the point. You know, it's nice to defend second because then you don't have to be the team that takes all the railings out. <laughs> They're already pre-destroyed by the first team. Saves you a bit of, uh, bit of time. I wish we had uh, competitive modes. They're just going to cover the car in uh, NYXL logos. Competitive modes with the railings pre-removed. That would be nice. Pre-removed cool. railings. Yep. No railing mode. That car is totally tricked oh, out now. Oh, somebody didn't put, you know, line up their NYXL spray. Yeah, Exhibit's like, man, that's a nice car. <laughs> you did a good job with that one. <laughs> Somewhere. I know he watches out. <laughs> Here we go. San Francisco on the attack. Exhibit's your biggest fan, Noah. That's what I've heard. <laughs> That's what they tell me. They're going to go for the Sombra, like you mentioned. So it's going to be using that big health pack around the corner here to set up a fast DMV, keep people healed up. Dante sneaking around the side. Going to go for the hack on the other one, too. Hack on Emeko first here. This will be the anticipated composition. San Francisco. See Dante peeking out, trying to get a, a hack on one of the tanks right now. Oh, uh, Mecco was the target earlier. Still not going to find it. So how long yeah. are they going to play this song and dance till they get EMP? If we can get a hack earlier, that will open up a target. you think that would be the plan. Oh, there goes Save Obi. Or oh. I mean Sleepy. Uh, Save Obi picks off Sleepy. He was outside of the main choke point. So Tracer makes his the way all the way back around. It's a and long it means, run back. Yeah, Sleepy's gonna have to try and get back and they can't, oh, they have to this. retreat now. And Dante is going to hide in the depths of Westworld while That's the rest right. of his team goes back to taxi Sleepy in. Cause Sleepy can't be left outside that choke point alone or Sandy Obi will keep killing him. True. Dante way in the back now. NYXL trying to defend as best they can. Mecco push back into the stairway for the moment. But New York looking a little bit scattered here. Oh, that one got eaten. Pulse Bomb sucked up by Mecco's mech. Baby Bay bounced away by the concussion. Only Mono got hacked, now. and they're going right. to, or Janus rather, they're going to take him out. That's right, it's a different Winston player this time. There you go. Rip tire, rolling, looking for targets. Getting a little bit low. There's one. Oh, taken out though by Nevix in the nick of time. 
Ark did get the res onto Janus too there. And they got the res onto Janus, but they had to use the Valk and the Transcendent. So yeah. NYXL still with three ultimates. They will desuit Nevix. Oh, that is a rough, uh, that is a rough little stall on Nevix there. That's going to make it take a bit longer for San Francisco to set up again. So they, they put a lot into that fight there. They had a lot of setup, and now you can see, yeah, Dante changing over to the Genji. Can't really dedicate any more time in this push to the Sombra. No, and he was getting a lot of his approaches cut off by traps. He was having to deal with New York hiding in the cafe here, where we see Jonak right now uh, cutting off the line of sight. So the EMP only hitting one target. Yeah. And that was nullified by a couple of support ults. All right, San Francisco sound barrier. Janus taking a lot of damage as he has to back away despite the primal rage. Uh -oh. Finds a couple members of San Francisco in the cafe though. Uh oh, they did not count on Janus turning around, I think. San Francisco still trying to take it. They need to make something happen with this push right here, right now. They've nearly got the point. And he's just walking into the corner, getting juggled like it's a fighting game. That's right, but Janus still stays alive again, but they can't stop San Francisco from getting the payload moving. They do win the fight kind of at the end here. That was that was a bit interesting. You yeah. don't see the payload taken while the fight is still kind of going on, but... And especially while New York is winning the fight, too. Yeah. They were not paying attention to actually getting on the point. It will right. mean that they can play more aggressively on the defense right now, but still sloppy from New York, not getting a body onto the control point and allowing San Francisco to start moving the payload. I like this, though. You back up onto the rooftop. You don't play that defense too aggressively. You don't want what happened to San Francisco to happen to you, where you lose that high ground advantage, and then point B goes really fast. Yeah, you have time, too, to get the jump rat up there. He's got the rip tire, so stall's still possible. Well, they've already used up a lot of the time for San Francisco's time bank just on point A. There's still under a minute remaining, or rather, uh, two and a half minutes remaining, if I look at the correct side of the screen. For San Francisco. Yeah, you look at that too. That's actually crazy. Dante's Tracer KD versus Jonak is eight to nine. Ooh, wow, yeah. And Say BLB is a smooth 14 and 0 versus Sleepy. Not bad. NYXL with a lot of ultimates here. They've got the point stalled out again. Now just two minutes for San Francisco. So how do you break this if you're San Francisco? You have to maybe do some sort of dive on the high ground, I suppose. You do, but you also have to wait for the rip tire to come out. And so tough. NY's been, oh, baby bay. been so patient, and when they keep getting picks, they're damage boosting Jonak now. Sabiel B. There's 15-0 oh, for the Sabiel B. Oh, Sabiel B. Sleepy battle. It's getting a bit disgusting now. I mean, he was 28 eliminations and one death on Lee Jiang Tower. He is currently 32 eliminations and three deaths on Hollywood, so another standout day for the Star Tracer player from New York. That's oh, a standout day and a standout stage. Oh, and another standout play from our standout Zenyatta. I've used my quota of standout for the entire stage <laughs> at this point. New York, though, hasn't quite used up their quota of winning fights in this match, apparently. Down to a minute now for San Francisco. Ark has yet to die on Hollywood, too. So they've been Man. unsuccessful in killing New York's back line. Oh, Baby Bay just going for picks now. He swapped over to the Widowmaker. He got to try to get some of these kills because it's just going to be too hard to take that high ground. Libero has still been saving that rip tire. Well, you know you're at a huge ult disadvantage. You've only seen a pulse bomb recently, so you, you have to know New York has everything else. Your only hope is to get a pick before they can use an ultimate. That's right. You know, Echo's gonna deliver himself to the team, actually, but that's gonna mean Pulse Bomb comes in. Oh, no, Rip Tire from Libero 2. Dante and uh, Dak going down, and New York just gonna jump on the back lines. They're practically spawn camping San Francisco now. Uh, Self-destruct used to get Mecco in his suit. Rip Tire used because Mecco went down, but it's still two support alts. And a tank ult and a DPS ult here for New York. Shruff. A good time for them. Sleepy far away from his transcendence, which he just used. All you have to do if you're New York is just be patient here. Don't overcommit to a fight. You can win the map right here. San Francisco, though, needs to play flawlessly, and losing Sleepy does not help you with that. Dante pooped away. Can't get to the opponent. Zoned out by Janus so effectively. And Sabi will be again taking down Dante. King of that matchup, it seems like. Another pulse bomb ready to go to try to finish this one off. Waiting until just the right time. Has to recall, though. Dak getting a little bit too much healing here. And he goes down Nomi with that Primal Rage. 
but it's not going to be enough. There's Mako getting Nevix with that self-destructed. San Francisco scrambling just to stay on the payload. I don't know if they can do it, though. Baby Bay on the tracer now, just trying to keep his team's hopes alive in this series. But another rip tire comes in, and that's going to be a kill on a Baby Bay. No one can get to the payload, and NYXL will win Hollywood. That's three wins in this series so far for them. Uh, this, Dola, every time we get to the end of one of these maps, when we hit the overtime period and San Francisco's making their final push, New York has consistently had a massive ult advantage. And these things can't keep going the way they are for the Shock. The ult economy has not been tight tonight. New York has abused that. And when San Francisco has to all in, it's a massive uphill battle. Well, it's been rough for the Shock. We'll see if they can at least come out of this with a map win when we get back, guys. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Welcome back, everybody, to the Blizzard Esports Arena here in Burbank, California. Don Monte Cristo here, closing out NYXL versus San Francisco Shock. New York up 3-0 so far in the series. San Francisco putting up a bit of a fight, but this one's been pretty one-sided, hasn't it? It, it, it really, it, yeah, in some ways it has been, and especially because of how Sam Bilby's playing right now. Yeah. He's, he's hitting like Saiyan Bilby levels at this Saiyan point. Bilby. Super <laughs> Saiyan Bilby, I get it. That's right. Good. Make me your photoshops. <laughs> but yeah, Bring it, me it, your photoshops. It's been great. Ended the map, 39 eliminations, four deaths, 18 That's final insane. blows. Just crazy performance out of this guy this evening. That's right. And hey, if it's not a hybrid map, Mono will play main tank. 
Janice subbing out again, but you can't argue with putting Janice in for these hybrid maps. They're now 6-0 after that last one. Yeah, he, it's interesting that they've turned him into more or less a hybrid specialist during yeah. this stage. And we haven't seen much of the big boss Pine. A lot of these maps don't really suit him in the same way. I think if there's ever a chance where New York goes to Ilios for a tiebreaker that we might see him again. Well, yeah, I think that that's definitely a place you put Pine back in. Ilios is kind of uh, his map right now. But we are going to Route 66 for the moment, which was not New York's map yesterday. This is the one that they actually did drop to Philly in the end. They had already won the series, but weren't able to come out with that 4-0. And when we talk about big performances, uh, we also have to talk about Dante, who in their last map against the Fuel, we mentioned it at the beginning of the match, but he went 48 eliminations and one death on a combination of Sombra and Tracer. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> On this on this map, so it really did look good for the shock. They, that was the only time we've seen them play at this stage. But encouraging signs. So both we're we're coming off a big win for the shock on this map. We're coming off a close loss for the NYXL on Route 66. Now looking to do a bit better here. Say we'll be attacking first. That Sombra Soldier from the shock. Same defense they used. Beacon. playing against the fuel but when we when we saw new york on this they didn't run dive on the attack if they thought there was going to be a sombra they ran basically the ultimate anti-sombra pickup the kree roadhog and reaper with a moira so it was it was an interesting strat to try against philly uh-huh and we'll see if they do it here or if they're just they're just gonna play standard dive which would disappoint me because they should know oh, that the Sombra is oh. coming. Well, I mean, they're going to go ahead and go for the uh, the Mercy Widowmaker here. And Libero at least going to throw out that Sonic Arrow as you do a lot of times on Route 66. Can't imagine he's going to. They're doing with double it. sniper. Dare I, on this map? Dare I hope? Wow, well, this is different from yesterday. All right. We're going to go double sniper here. Anzo and the Widowmaker. Libero looking for that Sombra, it seems like. Trying to poke off the high ground. You know, you... About Jonak, although he's the real sniper here, Sleepy falls again. Jonak's had an insane day, man. This guy has been hitting those headshots, oh, hitting those killed snipes. Dante too. Yeah, why not? There goes Baby Bay. Jonak coming up with two. Liberal's like, hey, why am I even here? I'm protecting the health pack, guys. So they, they use the Hanzo in the tunnel, so that if somebody comes into the health pack, he can scatter arrow in the small, confined environment. That's the plan. What? Sleepy. Sleepy's been he losing can't. these Zenyatta pick peak oh battles all day. Sleepy does have a tendency. Sometimes we saw this in stage one. He peaks too aggressively and he gets punished for it. So uh, he gets a lot of picks when he does that, but now you're playing against Jonak, and that's uh he's uh he's the king of the the peakers, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. The peak king. <laughs> Known as that Dante use that EMP. San Francisco going to try to turn this fight around there. They did get Mano out of this. Libero, though, with the Dragon Strike, he's going to need to run as he's getting dope right now. Whoa, stop down by Nomi. Nomi a bit low, too, but Mech d mech before he can finish him off, trying to D-Mech Nevix. He gets it. There's the self-destruct for Nevix. Arc reses Jonak here as Mano comes back in. Well, he's the DPS expert, right? <laughs> Mecco gonna just go ahead and give himself up. Art, can you get the rise? I don't know. That's uh, a bit risky. Okay, so now we're gonna have Infrasight with two snipers on the side of NYXL. So, a uh, challenge for the Shock to stay out of line of sight. Dante. Right. Waiting for uh, Mecco to get back. So here's the Infrasight. Two snipers. See what they can put together with it. <laughs> they're, on, they're standing on top of each other right now. Land. Oh, gotta watch out for that tracer. Sable B gets dope, turns around, finds a couple shots. Noli dies early. They didn't have a lot of support for him. Nevix d almost immediately. Now another EMP comes in from Dante. Sable B, though, not a lot of pressure on this guy. As San Francisco does manage, though, to kill both supports on the New York. And that's what they needed. Wait till the infrasight is done. Oh, didn't, they, didn't they attack the high ground? The DAC attack. Works out pretty well. Mano just trying to fling as many people off the cliff as he can, but it's a bit too oh, late. Oh, is too far more. He gets punished by the Primal Rage, punched in towards the spawn. Man, and that is a little That's bit rough huge. for San Francisco, man. They had the win as far as the fight went, and then they maybe over-pursued a bit. They did, and it was also just the repositioning, but now they don't have any supports here to help with the payload. Sleepy making his way back. 
A Libero off the Hanzo onto the Farah, trying to protect that choke now. And a lot of damage on the Nevix as he flies in to try to handle the Farah. He's gonna get demeched again almost instantly. Sound barrier comes in, but not soon enough to save Nevix's mech. And that's gonna be point A taken by NYXL. Yeah, Rockets now doing their work. Primal Rage pops. Dante will take out Libero, but you're not going to stop the payload from reaching point A. Yeah, so now what you have to do if you're NYXL is what Mecco's kind of already started to do is try to protect that big health pack room on the side. And if you can do that, that's going to take away sort of your uh, point of contact for the, the enemies. That's where they like to kind of hang out sometimes. But not this time. Whoa, and Sleepy not getting to hang out anywhere except for the respawn room. Yeah, Shock does like to play Baby Bay on the Tracer on this point of this map. So they've already made the transition over to these two short-range, highly mobile heroes. But finding the flanks may prove difficult and preventing the damage onto their supports and tanks from Libero will be challenging as well. Dante's here. Has the EMP, is looking for that opportunity. He's gonna try and get onto Jonak. Does oh, it? Oh, Jonak! He gets saved by Ark. Ark no popped kidding. Valkyrie. Man, also that defensive matrix coming in from Mecco came up big to keep Jonak alive. That EMP not doing a whole lot. Instant Valkyrie. They knew Jonak was the target. And they keep him alive with the healing and with the defensive matrix. New York ready. Oh, that's a bit of a late transcendence from Sleepy. Couldn't keep Nomi alive. And they're just going to try to use this to delay the payload for a little bit. I don't think it's going to stop too much, though. Nevix on his own again. They're not going to get through the doors of the barrage up oh, either. That comes in. But he can't stop the progress of NYXL. That's going to be point B taken now with a lot of time in the time bank to try to finish this one off. And the barrage is saved. Not sure if he really is going to try and use it here or if we are going to see another switch over. Baby Bay, we discussed this earlier, plays Roadhog on this point of Route 66, trying to use the narrow hallway of the warehouse to nail some hooks. Oh, Rod Dak somehow getting taken out by Mono. A little bit out of position there. It seems like Nevix kills Libero off. Will Libero swap now? I think it might not be a bad idea, despite having the ultimate up. Oh, nice kill on Nevix before he gets back into the mech. Beautiful finisher. Dodges the damage by blocking line of sight. Has the rocket boost to finish off what he had started. In for sight. Up here for Sam I'm going to go ahead and use it. Maybe they can uh, use this to set Libero up for a big barrage. Francisco coming on the side to try to defend here. Sleepy gets Libero again. That's the second time he's died here. On point C, he's not even gotten close enough to use that barrage. Jonak again onto Sleepy after Libero is resurrected. Now That's it's up to Nomi, but the barrage will hit him in the rear. Well, they found a chance to use it, actually. And now they've got San Francisco pushed back. Nevix too low health to really fight it out. He's going to get demeked as well. Libero coming around the side and the thing is, if, if you get this far with the far, you can start to cover the doors with those rockets, and that can be tough to get past sometimes. Jonak with another kill on the DAC. Oh boy, there goes Baby Bay. Libero pushing this far farther than we've seen on this map in a long time. Sleepy with the transcendence, but he's a bit on his own. Now Nevix back out of the spawn room again. Baby Bay on the bay. It's desperation mode now. Sound barrier used, but New York just not gonna oh! come. Jonak again! Unstoppable power from this Zenyatta. It's just disgusting to watch his targeting. He is so good at leading those orbs. He is absolutely the best I've ever seen. And they use that to take point C. That's over a minute left in the time bank for them. Minute and 10 seconds. Excellent finish from New York. And now the Shock have their chance. They did win in time bank against Philadelphia on Route 66. So they are accustomed to quickly pushing through this map. Don't count them out just yet. Yeah. True enough, we'll see what they've got to show here on their attack run. Right now, kind of thinking about running uh, Nomi on that Reinhardt. I suppose it's possible, but... Now, what do you want to do? Do you want to rely on Baby Bay on the Widowmaker? Do you want to maybe rely on Dante on the Tracer? Like, what's your ticket to take point A here if you're in San Francisco? I, uh, well, their ticket in the past has been run Baby Bay with the Widowmaker and the Tracer. So maybe go back to that basic strategy again and see if you can 
boost with the Mercy, enough damage from the Widow to get the quick pick. Yep. Once again, on defense from New York, like we see quite a bit. Ark yep. and Jonak, of course, uh, Ark over on that Ana. And they're going to run Libra on the Sombra, too, so a little bit less damage overall, but, you know, that's what you would normally say, and then you remember Jonak is on the team, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, that's actually a high damage Zenyatta. It is. You're okay. And this, this is the way that New York prefers to play Route 66 defense. Use the DPS on the Sombra instead. You do sacrifice damage, but you gain more healing. So as long as your targeting is good, which it has been for New York so far today, <laughs> that you don't need the damage. You just need the damage all at once in the right time. Libero forgot to change his spray. I do not know what's going on here. But... <laughs> Overwatch or New York? Why not both? <laughs> you get both with this team, actually. You certainly do. San Francisco on the attack, trying to come away with at least one map win today. Off of the skills of Baby Bay. Trying to get those headshots. Now New York running for cover, and they're not going to give Baby Bay a lot of sight lines here. No, just go ahead, play in Big Earl's in the tunnel. Nobody's contesting you there. You can wait until the payload reaches that point, and then you'll have easier access to both of the Mega Health Packs. That's right. Not a lot of pressure on the Baby Bay as of yet. Gotta watch out through that doorway. No New York. Moving in a bit more here. They haven't sent anyone around the back just yet, it looks like. New York just cycling on the payload right Whoa, now. Whoa, Jonah! Sleepy will get his revenge. Finish off what Dante starts. Yeah, that's right. Combining for enough damage on the Jonah to do it. There's a hack, though, coming in from NYXL already. Save will be finishes off. Dante. Dante was caught by the EMP. Sitting duck on that tracer. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of sitting duck stack, nearly one there. He was able to guardian back to Baby Bay, but he's on his own mono. Finish him off anyway. So it's going to be a stop right there from New York Excelsior. San Francisco going to have to go back to the drawing board a bit here. Yeah, they don't have the EMP any longer, but it will be back up soon enough. Jonak killed by Sleepy, but... The rest of his team buys the time for him to return. Yeah, well, the big EMP from Libero really kind of set up a win on that fight despite the 5v6. Halo's moving. All right, the Mano boost coming again. There's a stick. Jonak going down. Mano, oh, being taken out too. Wow, he didn't get anything done at all. And San Francisco with a decent start. Although they did lose Nomi, it looks like they may have lost just a bit too much to push. And Baby Big finishes off Mecco right before he can re-enter his suit. That might I be the crucial kill. Yeah, Libero think... has an EMP, but he is falling oh. back. And Baby Bay will make sure Samuel B is not able to join the response of his team. Great stagger for the shot. Yeah, lost a bit, but we're able to come back and win the fight. And will New York try to contest? Oh. No, Jonak not able to get there. New York trying to contest here, but it's a good start for San Francisco already. Baby Bay with another shot on the Mecco there. And that's how the pick compositions work here, Doa. Exactly right. Get those headshots, land your shots, and constantly force your opponents to fight at a disadvantage. San Francisco gets their legs under them and rolls through point A, keeps their hopes on Route 66 alive. Well, Mano tried to retreat there, but he got taken down on the way out, and so he's going to have to wait with all of New York. Hello. These staggers have been great for the Shock. Again, Libero, they've, for the past minute, they've kept New York at a player disadvantage the entire time. That's right. A Mano spinning, turning his back to try to not take Widow shots as he comes in. Gonna dive that high ground there. They need to retake it if they're gonna contest here on point B. Libero still wants to get this EMP. Oh, Dante. Does he actually get the hack? He, Sleepy is the target now. Ark will fall. Yeah, Ark down early. Did he do any damage with that pulse bomb? Hard to say, but getting one support early helps out. Libero just gonna try to headshot Baby Bay, but no, Baby Bay flies off into the distance. That brings a res in on Nomi. No res on the San Francisco or on the New York side. Uh, Jonah is using the transcendence to join his DPS right now. That is optimistic. Well, I mean, they're getting kills out of it at least. Jonak very low. I don't know how long he can stay in this fight. San Francisco still going to have people coming in much, much quicker. But that said, Mecco and Sabio will be combining for the kill on the Nevix here. Oh, and Nomi takes a nap at the wrong time. Wow. So Jonak 
uses the speed of the transcendence to make it back to where Libero had just used the EMP. And That's right, man. New York scraps it out. Baby Bay on to the McCree now. Just a speed boost to get Jonak there so he can headshot people sooner. <laughs> That's right. Why not? All right, San Francisco coming in, but they got to deal with the nano boost on Damato again. Gets stunned. A little bit of trouble there, but Libero comes up with two big kills before his tank falls. And San Francisco pushed back yet again. And they keep focusing down targets. Before anything else, Libero had the hack onto Nevix on the D.Va, so no protection there from the Sombra. And combining the Sombra damage with the nano boost and Winston damage, Libero cleans up the kills that were begun by his tank. That's right. New York has done such a great job of seizing defensive control of point B back again after kind of losing that a little bit early on, and Libero Sombra has been very good. And we have to watch Libero here. He's going to be coming around the side again with this EMP. Wants to find them. He's going to hack the both supports in Baby Bay. That's quite a bit. Three on that one. Mano comes in for the kill on the Sleepy. Samuel B avoids his own pulse bomb there. And whoa, Libero storming in again. San Francisco just destroyed in that room. They got caught back there. They knew the EMP was coming, but they couldn't get Libero away from them in time. No flashbang there. Everybody hacked right as Libero enters the choke point, and now there's only a minute left for the shock. Yeah, San Francisco needs to get something done in a hurry here if they want to have any chance of equalizing and taking this map, but it's going to be a mountain to climb for these guys. Even can really uh, contest this point here. New York in a great spot for that. But Mono has the Primal Rage early, but now does he get the knockoff on the Sleepy? No, not quite. The angle wasn't there. San Francisco forcing that ultimate out pretty early, but now Sleepy in a bit of trouble. Maybe they have the kill on the Libero though, but they do finally get the Zenyatta for San Francisco. It's going to be Jonak with the ultimate here as Mano staying alive through the Zenyatta Transcendence. Baby Bay in a lot of trouble. Neko finishes him off. And San Francisco losing team members left and right here as they try to push the payload. Pretty much only Nomi left. We saw it yesterday. Jonak got nano boosted again, but it was after he had already had a pulse bomb on him. Can't do anything, but the rest of his team can. Yeah, that's right. They will come through, and that's overtime. Activated by Dante, trying to keep his team's hopes alive. Nevix in there with the Doom Fist. Not going to last too long. And yeah, Jonak with a fadeaway kill onto Dante. The match is over. NYXL with the 4-0. Clean sweep from the Excelsior. Looking dominant in their old economy, dominant in many ways throughout this entire series. And they really did. Samuel B once again steps up. That last map we've been talking about is stat lines all night. 31 eliminations, 18 final blows, two deaths. You know, <laughs> it's about those stat lines, but it's also about how the other members of the team support players like that, right? If you watch Mecco's play, he's so good at keeping people safe on his team. Like, he knows his limits on D.Va extremely well. And Ark, of course, I think kind of getting overshadowed with Jan uh, Jonak on your team. It's, it's hard not to be, but you know, this guy does some pretty amazing stuff, too. So, New York coming out with a strong 4-0 and a pretty strong week overall. It's been a great week for New York. Yeah. Pleasure to watch this team. Not a lot of roster swaps, except for Jonas and Mano so far at this stage, but they're doing what works. Ooh. They've adapted beautifully to stage two. Sure have. Well, when we come back, guys, the desk will tell us all about the greatest moments of that match. You won't want to miss it. See you then. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network.
NYXO improves to five in one in stage two after easily sweeping the boys from the bay. Welcome back everyone to the desk for the post game of NYXL versus the San Francisco Shock. New York winning that one four to zero. Here at the desk we have reinforcing crumbs and gentlemen, I mean, at some point in time, you know, like you look in NYXL and you're just like, how, how much further can this team go? Because clearly they are just so dang good. I mean, they did lose to the Lono Spitfire earlier in stage two, right? So there is, there are some teams that are capable of actually beating the New York Excelsior. There, there are some great matchups in the making. That's because they choked, though. They were up 2-0 in the finals. Yeah. And if they can just shore that up, which we've been saying about that team for a while, if they could just shore up the choking when it comes to those really high pressure situations, they'd be fine. And I still think they can do it. Yeah, they sure, but too bad. there's a risk of it escalating, you know, we've got sure. stage two playoffs and then, you know, oh, the choking is back, you know. You, you get four stages to try it, though. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard true. to Very true. Well, let's jump into our first game here and, uh, uh, you know, discuss some of these uh, highlights here. Hollywood, uh, to kick things off, we're looking for San Francisco to potentially get the, the train moving, you know, hop on the BART, maybe get that reverse sweep going, no, but it's not happening. First time, first time I ever rode that BART, I had somebody there literally urinating on the train so i'm not a fan <laughs> of the city not, not my not my cup of tea and Damn. just like that san francisco they, all they wanted was tea this time because they hug around the cafe 24 7 against the dive composition running arisa monty mentioned that they literally just stuck around giving so much leeway to the new york excelsior and i think that's what happened here san francisco's just playing too scared they respected new york as if there's some sort of deity of the game you know they're still players you, they can still die yeah and just once again saibi olby he, i mean he just performed so well this game yeah. as well is I mean, saibi olby normal had no chance he was dead already dude is saibi olby normal like really mm -hmm. like he's not a normal player man i have a slogan it's like saibi olby best tracer in the world Yes, but that's my old good yeah. slogan. That's yeah. your slogan? <laughs> yeah. How long did it take you to think about that one, Reinforce? <laughs> about, about 50 segments. Yes, 50 segments. 50 <laughs> segments. I don't even know if we've hit I don't that. even think I've done 50 segments. Yeah. Oh, maybe I have. Uh, maybe you have. Who knows? Um, all right. Well, I mean, yes. And, and while New York Excel uh, were able to secure that victory there, we then move on to Route 66, hoping to see San Francisco try and bounce back here. But again, it was all for naught yeah, as and, NYXL thrives. It plays into Dante's Sombra, right? So you think that this is a pretty good map for the San Francisco Shock. I highlighted in the halftime, I think Sombra is one of Dante's best heroes, potentially one of the best Sombras in the league, I would say, in terms of raw skill. So you think the map plays into the San Francisco Shock, but it does, didn't at this time. You know, I'm a truth addict, and I'm about to come out with a head rush here because oh, the boy. San Francisco Shock, we said for the entirety of stage one, it's not their meta. Uh -oh. Mercy is gonna is ruining this team when they get the Lucio back. They're gonna be super good. They're gonna look sick and it's not happening. It's really not happening or even close uh, to mean, it. I mean, they were on the rise, you know. They yeah, it's on the rise, field. but now you're up against New York. Yeah. Excel, you're shooting, you're running for the for the top. You need to be displaying something much better yeah, than sure, this. I mean, but the we supports can, yeah. we can, in that last map, they died twice. The New York Excel supports died twice. Man, to the Cy 21 Cy deaths Cy from Cy so good. Okay. But, but this is the problem, though, right? We, we talked about a little bit before the half, like, or, or actually in the half, uh, this is a team that obviously wanted to prioritize the DPS, and they did so. And it feels as if maybe in certain other areas they are they are just simply struggling. Yeah, I mean, when when the league is announced and you're looking for players, it's kind of like a pinata is broken, and you got to go for the certain kinds of candies that are laid out on the floor. And if you Brilliant. go for all the DPS early on, now you're left up with a yeah. really you know you, you used up all your sour patch kids here, and you have nothing oh. else to back it up. Oh. You see that one, baby? Oh. Dude, you I'm see that one? You. It's catching you on. You should be a host one day. You should be a host. All you got to do is just find America's Best Unlimited Network in there. <laughs> Demo. <laughs> now, I do think that actually going into the Overwatch League, I think a lot of people hyped up Dak as one of the best Lucios in the world. The problem is that Dak is a very aggressive Lucio. And so you see when he goes up against someone like Saibi Olby, he's not accustomed to actually peeling for Sleepy and actually dealing with it. We look at someone like Neptuno on the side of Philadelphia, of course, who just frags out. I mean, he pretty much won the game. Not by himself, but he hit Jake so yeah, many yeah, times yeah. on the Tracer. So he had a huge impact. So when you look at the San Francisco squad, they have the pieces, but they don't necessarily fit together, in my opinion. Well, you know what, though? I, I, I do agree with the, 
you know, assessment of the supports and, and San Francisco Shock uh, struggling a little bit here. But, I mean, really, we got to talk about NYXL supports. You you mentioned it before. I mean, it, it, it might as well. Our player of the match, sponsored by Omen by HP. He played so nice. We had to give it to him twice. It's going to be Jonak once again. This guy, and, and, and Crumbs, I actually want to ask you because we were talking about who it should be. You had a really good point about why it should be Jonak. Exactly. I was thinking, is it going to be Safiobi or is it going to be Jonak? Well, when you got Safiobi, now it's us for a little bit, but it is Jonak actually. And it's a matter of who do you give it to? Do you give it to the Tracer that's taking out the Zenyatta or the Zenyatta that's dealing with the Tracer, which is what Jonak was doing? And look at that. Final blows on Shock DPS. 23. That's a support for four maps. That is ridiculous. That's bonkers. So we gave it to the Zenyatta. If you ever play Zenyatta and you're dealing with a Tracer in your face, the fact that you're able to hit a single orb is already amazing enough. Taking them out, you get player of the game. That's the kind of bloodthirsty Zenyatta play that makes Doa just oh so happy with his life. There are many ways I could have taken that, but I decided to keep it PG. Um, yeah, so once again, Jonak, congratulations. Uh, second time in a row, our uh, player of the match sponsored by Omen by HP. Uh, so looking forward here at the schedule. So we're going to have a cracking matchup against uh, NYXL next week. So that will be a fun one. NYXL takes the stage against them. Meanwhile, the shock uh, it honestly doesn't get any easier. Uh, they got to face London, then they got to face Houston, and then they oh. have to face Florida. Oh, man. Life's rough, man. <laughs> Life's rough, man, yeah. right? So if you're going to start to, I guess, you know, formulate this and build everything together and start to solidify some strategies, also considering that Sinatra and Super are going to be available in a couple days, I mean, now certainly is the time to do it. Wouldn't you guys agree? Sure, but is that, re that uh, we're, we're really wondering how much is that going to change the team? And I think that yeah. Sinatra might not change so much where a Super's addition might be the one that changes things a lot because we get to contrast to the Gladiators where they added Fissure and then the team looks completely different. Whereas typically when teams add a DPS, it really hasn't changed a whole lot. So I want to see what Super brings to the table. Yeah, I'm very excited, uh, you know, for those additions to the San Francisco Shock. But congratulations to NYXL. They are your winners for this one. And we're looking forward to seeing them next week as well. But that's not it, folks, because coming up next, we got a great matchup. We have the Florida Mayhem going up against the Dallas Fuel, our last match of the day. You don't want to miss it. And we'll catch you in just a few.